Hey everybody, it's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history living inside your aquarium. Just showing you guys the new tank and the fact that, you know what, we are in a stage where algae almost started taking over. We almost got a lot of algae growing and we batted down the, the green uh, hair algae and the diatome algae. Well, then, the last few days, if you recall me saying, we hit a bad patch of the black beard algae. There's still a little bit here and there, but nothing crazy. So, that's really good. How did we, how did we stop this algae? Well, the main way we did it was, uh, and by we, I guess I mean I, but I feel like you guys are in it with me. So the main thing we did, dialed down the light to seven hours a day from eight. Just That's just a little bit. We put in Siamese algae eaters. And by uh, several, I mean just one. I don't know why I said plural. And then we cranked the CO2 up quite a bit. So we cranked the CO2 to several bubbles a second. And between those things, plus a few of the uh, short-nosed Japanese algae-eating shrimp. Let's see if we can find one of them. Uh, no, that's an autosynclus. Let's see, where are they? They were cleaning these leaves really well. Uh, well, we found one of those in any case. Uh, downstairs, I got those from Aquatic Arts, but they're kind of shy. They think the angelfish are going to eat them. See, there's some black beard still right there on the purple flame sword. Um, so, in any case, if I see one, I'll let you know. But, um, so it looks like that is averted. The main thing that we need to do now is just make sure that there are enough plants to soak up all the nutrients that are in the ground. And the fact that in this tank we have so many plants that are... Uh, low to the ground, slow growing crypts, things like that, and kind of hybrids that don't always grow the fastest, um, you know, things that need lots of extra light, Anubius, Busa philandra. Um, we've got Boos over here that's the white uh, Boos, Pinto or Albino, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so some of those plants aren't growing quite as fast as you'd want. Um, a plant too to suck up nitrates you know if we had duckweed that would also work um the rotala uh, purple vietnam is growing very fast so that's helping the bulbitis really fast um the uh let's see here the uh um limnophilia bellum in the back that grass that i want to grow up into a wall growing fast the bacopa is growing insane. I've never seen bacopa grow quite, get out of the way, dude, uh, quite like this. Um, and the AR mini is growing insane also. Look at those roots. The soil is so rich in nutrients right now that it's obsessed with it. It just wants that soil. So hopefully by adding a few things, uh, we can kind of help this process of stopping Blackbeard flare and also kind of inoculating the tank. Then it'll be in the system, but it'll have been fought and won, so to speak. Um, hopefully that helps. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some more plants. Here we have a really nice plant. This is, uh, this is a Ludwigia. And uh, it's probably some sort of, uh, actually, I think this is a glandulosa, like a super red or ultra red glandulosa. You can see how tight these are without even CO2 downstairs. They're still very tight uh, bunches. That's why I'm guessing it's not a repens, Ludwigia repens. But we'll plant those. They grow quickly. And I'm not saying I'm planting these in to make a beautiful aquascape. Basically, I'm just eating up the nutrients and growing some really nice plants under CO2 um, and kind of helping things get through this this phase where sometimes there's a little extra ammonia and nutrients than the average will be in the long run. Also, just an update report. Thanks again to Alan, my viewer. Look at that. 
Laganandra me bold eye silver. It literally looks like somebody painted silver metallic flakes onto a plant and just dropped it in my tank. Let's see if we can get a close up of the silver through the through the the window. There you go. You kind of see it. Eh. Well, it's so reflective, it's hard to film. But we've got that, and then we've also got the Laganandra. Let me zoom back out for you guys here. The light is so overwhelming to this uh, camera. Uh, then we have the Laganandra Me Bold Eye European Pink. So that's different than the U.S. Uh, pink or red. It actually starts out like a peach color and then goes to a nice bronze with pink notes through it and lime green still on it. So slightly different, but interesting. Uh, it looks like we have one Anubius that still has some algae issues. It's a greener algae, kind of like a black beard, but green. And it does come in dark green, so could be. Um, but you can see how quickly the CO2 is coming out. It's not crazy, but it's decent. Uh, other than that, the next thing we're going to put into the tank to just let it grow out and see what happens, this is uh, Rotala Mini Purple Vietnam. And even in super low light, no tech tanks, it still managed to get this type of uh, leaf patterns. And it's also, we've got all the roots here, so... We'll see what happens there um, when we toss that in. Next, we have uh, Ludwigia uh, of some sort here. Probably This is probably a Repens Narrow. Uh, probably not a Super Red, just because... But it's hard to tell. Sometimes these things will color up like crazy, and I'll have to eat my own words. But we'll see when we get light on it. None of these things have had light on them, hardly at all. So then we, we come to these guys, and you think, what is that, Mayaka, a rat tail? Well, this is Ludwigia, uh, or uh, sorry, Rotala uh, Wallichia, and if we can get a piece showing underwater here, it's a beautiful pink and super pink, delicate, hard to transform from immersed into water state, honestly. A lot of times you'll get it in clippings from a store or in a, you know, some sort of uh, tissue culture, and it just will not grow for you. Um, but that I've had growing for a year, and it's been existing in low light. Now here we have uh, Atra, Rotala Atra, that has been living in super low to no light. So that's going to be interesting to see how it colors up. Uh, next we have... More Limnophilia bellum with the roots living in low to medium light from a tank downstairs. We have uh, area column Vietnam that's been all beat to heck and it's basically, I don't know if we'll be able to save it, but fingers crossed. And then here, let's see here. So then here we have got some Rotala purple Vietnam uh, going on, and might be even Sunset Purple, which has orange and purple. It was a variety I got, um, at an auction a few years ago. And then we've got, uh, um, uh, Kabamba, uh, Fricata. You want some to eat? Kabamba Fricata, uh, purple. So instead of the orangier and pink colors like you see down there, right there, uh, this has more of a purple tint, but I didn't think I had any left, so that surprised me. Um, lastly, we have a uh, super red mini butterfly. Right now, it just looks like a pale pink and uh, really tight leaves that are super teeny. Um, but hopefully, that will all change in the next month or so. So I wanted to introduce you guys to those plants so that in a month or so, we can check in on them and you guys can uh, see how they transform with CO2 and FERTs. Last thing in this video, 
Uh, I've got some Malawa shrimp and some, uh, and they're Caradina shrimp, I should say. And then I've got at least three pregnant shrimp here that are uh, the blue uh, colors of the Malawas. And then there's a few golden, uh, a pregnant mother, golden uh, nebula from Aquatic Arts also. And then the L33, uh, L333, I should say, actually. That's three threes. 333. Uh, Pleco. And he's probably, I don't know, six months, four months old, something like that. Oh, no, he's probably six months old. So we're not going to put them in that tank. We're actually going to be putting them in, it's nighttime, but we're actually going to be putting them in this tank, which has the, uh, the barbs. I'm almost positive we'll eat these shrimp. However, two tanks downstairs, I said there's no way shrimps will be alive in here. And they, the combination of these gold nebula caradina and the Malawa shrimp, I have to tell you, I get them accidentally in tanks. I scoop up babies stuck to leaves and things, and they take over, even in tanks like the Garami tank downstairs and uh, the Danyo tank. So we'll see um, what happens when I put them in here intentionally, including a couple pregnant ones. There's cribs in here. There's Sergei, the giant angelfish. And then there is uh, also, yeah, there's Sergei. Sorry, it's dark, guys. Um, and then there's the albino tiger barbs plus uh, guppies. So there's a whole lot of things that will want to eat these. But I'm going to put them in at night for that reason. And we're going to let the pleco go also. And uh, the reason I'm letting the pleco go in here is that we've got the um, the other juvenile leopard frog plecos in here. So we've got two juvenile leopard frogs and an adult leopard frog plus the L333. They're all my meat eating slash omnivore, carnivore, uh, opportunivore type plecos that I have. The rest are all bristle nose or, you know, spotted or something that, that, uh, eats algae and wood and leftovers, basically. Uh, not that all, any pleco uh, would do, I mean, any pleco will eat, scavenge, you know, dead fish and things like that, but some do more than others. But also, the other thing that's helping the algae here are the nearite snails. So they're doing their job. I'm still looking for the uh, short nose mono shrimp from Aquatic Arts, those ones. I mean, they literally were just eating blackbeard algae. They cleaned up. I'd watch it systematically go up the uh, bulbitis or up an anubius plant and systematically clean the entire thing, one shrimp. I would say they're slightly bigger than a mono shrimp uh, at their biggest to the females. And then the males, I would say, are probably the size of a super large female cherry shrimp. Neocaridina. So, in any case, we're going to put these plants that are all lined up here into here, just find them a place to grow. Um, we've also got the uh, Sao Paulo, I think it's uh, Ludugia purensis, that's growing beautifully. Big shout out to uh, Jason on that one. Fish, come on. And uh, that's just growing beautifully, growing straight. It's very similar color to the AR or to uh, some of the other interesting red plants we've gotten here. But it's uh, it's very different when it grows out. So you'll get to see that. You'll get to see the uh, sunset hygrophila growing out insanely. Um, the watermelon nuri is going to go nuts with the CO2 and the lighting. And then the uh, Limnophilia, or I mean Ludwigia arculata, which is a natural hybrid. You're going to see that just coming to life in the next month. As well as, you know, pink flamingo crypts and red spiralis crypts. All those things are going to be, like there's a red spiralis. Uh, I think it's a win Windetti red spiralis or something. I'm not sure on the Windetti part, but it's definitely a crypt spiralis. And then we've got... Uh, you know, an assortment of mosses, Anubius, um, Coffifolia, Anubius gold coin, 
And, uh, oh, there's that shrimp. They, they change colors, so they blend in really well. But there's that shrimp, and he is just... That is a short nose, algae-eating Japanese shrimp. And uh, I forget his name, but he's on the plant that I kind of want to be the background in this whole... Uh, this whole aquascape once I, you know, we're going to take things out once the spike in fertilizers has evened out. But that's him right there. Uh, or is it a she? I can't actually tell right now. I wasn't paying attention. But that's one of them. And I think there's three in here right now. I've got seven downstairs that are growing out. They can hold their own. They're the size of a Corydora in length, I would say. Let's see we find a Corydora um, oh and it looks like we've got the other one right there so they're hanging out near each other the other one went down in there um, cleaning up that limnophilia bellum really well so all right guys I hope you're excited uh, to see what becomes of this I am uh, the Cryptodories back in there too I'm excited about that to come back to life and color um, and then the uh, Nicaea, uh, golden Nicaea is back in here. And we've got the Lemon Pleco already guarding another brood. He has babies downstairs already that I took from him because uh, he's a negligent father. Uh, but yeah, we've got the two shrimp right there and back there. If Aquatic Arcs has any left, I highly recommend them for black algae and also for just eating dead leaves they're eating several times their weight a day they must have crazy metabolisms and they turn color so these guys were clear and yellow when i put them in here um, with like yellow spots and things and now they have like this red and yellow with some green tones uh matching kind of camouflaged into the uh kabamba furcata and the uh, limnophilia bellum. And this guy is turning pink as we speak. That's the male right there. One of the males. Uh, so you can see that red and pink literally pumping up in those little nodules on the side of its exoskeleton. So pretty cool. All right, guys. Take care of your critters. Oh, and you can see the other one turning green up top. Really cool shrimp. Uh, see turning green up top. All right, take care, you guys. Uh, that's what's going on in the tank right now in the 90P high-tech, as I call it. Have a wonderful evening or day whenever you watch this. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for an update on this tank and how all these plants uh, grow when they're under the perfect conditions. Dun, dun, dun. All right, guys, take care of your tank, your critters the people around you, and yourself so that you can keep doing those other things. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Swim on.